Hello everybody, welcome back to Ball Street. Now, there's lots of transfer activity, it's gone on everywhere, but one place it doesn't really seem to be happening too much is Spurs. So we thought we'd talk to a Spurs fan and find out what generally Spurs fans are feeling about this transfer window. I'm not happy. He's not pleased. Uh, there's lots of people that you've been linked with. Grealish, Martial, you know, Sessegnon. Yep. But we're gonna get to the real reason. Zaha. Zaha, sorry, yeah, loads. <laughs> but we've, uh, we want to sort of dig into it a little bit because essentially on Twitter mainly, mm. Spurs fans are losing it. They're losing their shit. A little bit. Yeah, yeah a little As bit. As did you earlier in the week. Check out the uh, video we did about Martial. Uh, it kicked off with Flav having a little outburst about how boring it's I'm been. not. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. I'm not bothered by the fact that we haven't signed I feel like anyone. We've had this chat. I'm not bothered by <laughs> the fact we haven't signed anyone. It's just so dull. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm got to the stage where I'll, I'll, I'll take anyone. I don't care really good. Really? Yeah. Sure. Sure. I mean, you're in creepy own crisis at the moment. We can, yeah. Also, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. So today, QBR got hit by a forty-two million pound fine. So yeah. just be careful where you go with this. Don't get too. Like, I'm just saying, can't you give us a couple of your players? Just to no, we need them all. We've got a <laughs> transfer embargo in January. Okay. Yeah. So, Spurs, I mean, when you dig a little bit deeper into this Spurs situation, you realise it's not as simple as Spurs are not just buying because they can't be asked. Yeah. Which is. Even you thought that. I've just come to the conclusion <laughs> right, that Le 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 out. Levy's just gone, I just can't really be bothered. Yeah, and and Posh is like, I know what you mean. Before we get into that bit, let's talk about the expectations of Spurs fans going into this transfer window. Because I, I honestly, this feels like deja vu this entire video. Yes. Like, I swear we had this entire chat last year. Last year yeah, we did. About you're not signing anyone. <laughs> no, no, no. This, oh, no. We haven't spent extortionate amounts of money on players despite having a wicked squad. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And going into this summer, I also remember this conversation of like, right, you going, now's the time. <laughs> now's the time. Open up the wallet, uh, get the wad out. I mean, go get the that was naive. Was that just it? you though? Was that, what were your thoughts going into it? And what were all of Spurs fans thoughts going into it? I think everybody uh, was a little bit wary of the fact that we were in this situation last year and that we needed to sign players early and give Pochettino the pre-season that he needs in order for us to kick off well. Um, the fact is, we haven't signed anyone. We've got players coming back five days before the start of the season, just have, off holiday. A lot of players, I yeah. imagine, with the World Cup. Yeah. Because they had, what was it, nine in the semi-finals? Yeah. So, loads of players, <laughs> right? <laughs> not, not fit at the start of the season. And our squad hasn't been improved at all. Um, we haven't sold anyone either, to be fair. And like you say, there is, there is a, good, a good nucleus of players there. You know, we have got a very good team. And I think even if we don't sign anyone, we still finish in the top four. But, but, but... It's not about finishing in the top four, is it? It's about kicking on yeah. and giving yourself a, a good chance. I think it's time At least to push dreaming on. a little is bit. That's what fans think. It's time to push on. Yeah, it's time to, it's time to realise what we've got a great manager who can only do so much. Yeah. And these players are great. And he's great, committed himself as well, which is a massive step at yeah. the start of the summer. So we, we took that, uh, and going back to the question about expectation, we took that as he's going he's gonna to be given money to buy players, any players he wants. Yeah because he stayed in the, admit, uh, in the middle of interest from Real Madrid. And wasn't that part of his comment as well, that like now I need to... When there was that, that like two-day wobble of like, oh, is he not actually going to sign? Because he was saying, right, I need to get the players and have them early so that they can be ready for the season. Yeah, so you could understand why uh, you might look at that and go, well, Here we shouldn't go. there's some money there? You know, if we've got to spend £150 million on players, yeah. which would be lovely. From the outside, you would go, oh, okay, I, I understand the reason why they're not spending money, because they've bought a giant stadium. Yes, there is, is that. Is that the main reason why it's not happening there? Um, I don't think so. I, I think the, there is money there available, not as, money, not as much money as there would be if we hadn't built, this, built the stadium, but there's money there that's been ring-fenced. Ring Levy came out and said that there will be a budget available to, to buy players and improve contracts. And that's another thing we have done, is you know, we've given five players, top-level players, big new contracts with big signing on fees. So yeah. that is money that's being spent. Although not as exciting as bringing a new player in. Um, is that a problem with football fans in general? Is that it's uh, in the pre-season you're judged on the players you've brought in, not the players that you've got? Yeah, because players, yeah, exactly. There is that. Um, and fans, obviously, the most simple way to gauge the success or the development of a football club or improvement is by signing players. It's also the most... It's, there's no guarantee that you are improving mm. unless you buy someone who is outstanding. But by and large, clubs are scouting well. You look at Arsenal, 
I wouldn't say any of those players have improved their team, but as a, as a fan, I don't really know. Mm. But I'm just looking at them going, well, they're not Ozil and they're not Aubameyang level yeah, signings. They're not these giant names. But it could well be all of the, the, the fit yeah, yeah. yeah, fit perfectly and it, and it works. So usually the, the more players you bring in, the better your window's considered to be. Obviously the stadium's an issue. You know, there's a rising cost. 800 million pound was what was projected to, to, as the entire cost to pay for the stadium and the infrastructure around it. Uh, but it looks like it's going to rise to a billion. Um, but there is money. There is money ring fence. Levy said it himself. There's money ring fence for players, and and we look so upset when you're talking we, to him. We can. We can. But I'm not upset. I ain't. I'm fine. But it's, it's just upset. frustrating. Um, you just want a picture, don't you? You want an announcement. You want blah 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 signs. Yeah, on and like a guy who I've, I've, I don't. I quite like. I, I'd happily go back to the time when we were buying players I'd never heard of. Mm. That was good. Yeah. When you, um, had, you had like 20 centre midfielders. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if perhaps you, take, you saw a picture and they finally summoned it with Sean Davis, <laughs> you'd be fine with that. Why not? It's just a body. Yeah, get Lovely. a body in. Um, so what is the real reason why this isn't happening? Because and we'll, and this is kind of reveals the reason behind Martial, Grealish, Zaha, and and it kind of shows where you might be going and if those rumours are substantiated on something real or not. Yeah. So Spurs have got an issue which has only kind of been reported in the last day or two uh, about how many homegrown players or players that have been trained locally. That's the right expression. So, at the moment, in Spurs' squad, for the Premier League, we only have seven players that have been trained locally. And that part of the problem is... You need eight, don't you? You need eight to, to name a 25-man squad. So we can name seven, but we can only name a 24-man squad. We can name six, but only 23, and so on. Right. So, that, that's one issue. But by signing Grealish, which is the only one that seems like it might be likely, that solves that problem and we get a full quota for the Premier League season. Yeah. Uh, the or big Zaha as well. Or Zaha. Or Sessegnon as well. Sessegnon, yeah. I mean, Sessegnon's dead in the water. Fulham said they don't want to sell and you can't force a club to sell a player they don't want to. <laughs> Especially Sessegnon seems happy there for the time being. So, yeah. you know, fair play to both of those. Um, yeah, and uh, Zaha's going to be very, very expensive, although that's my dream. Grealish seems likely and we've got a full squad then. So the bigger problem is Champions League. So we have 17 uh, players that are considered non-domestic or non-locally trained mm. uh, and so we have 20 and the limit is 17 which means we could go into the Champions League squad with three players less than everybody else yeah now on the surface you think well that's not that big a problem you never get through most of that squad doesn't play anyway but the issue is that we can't keep buying players from foreign teams because that quota is going to go up and up right. so what we need to do is sell four foreign players which is doable because of those four you could sell Janssen, Lorente. Lorente, Sissoko and Dembele looked like he was on his way out, out of Erod. So getting rid of the players is less of an issue, although it's difficult for us because Levy wants a premium rate for all of those players. He's talking 25 million for Moussa Dembele, who's essentially a broken human being. Right. And his body just doesn't work the way he wants it to. Um, in a footballing sensor, I presume. <laughs> uh, and then, um, uh, so, so, so we're in a situation where we can't go and buy Martial, we can't get Malcolm you know, it's mooted that we were after him for a long time. Yeah. We can't buy these players because it doesn't help our Champions League squad at all. It means you have to leave out a first team player elsewhere. So we're in a weird situation currently. Greedish solves one problem, but the other problem is, you know, you, you, our pool of players that we can realistically buy, unless they're very special and it's worth losing another first team player, is people that have been trained in England. <laughs> That's, that's it. okay. Yeah. So well, that that's okay, of, but it's not. You're at a massive disadvantage. You've got one region to choose from instead of the entire world. Yeah. And, and then you add to that. This is part of the, another reason, the real reason why you haven't signed anyone as well is you add all those those factors in terms of the homegrown aspect of it. So that gets rid of Martial, um, gets rid of Malcolm. But then in terms of Grealish in particular, Daniel Levy and the way that he negotiates. Every article I read that goes. You know, he's renowned for his uh, negotiating tactics and he doesn't want to push to up to the 30 million that Aston Villa want now that he was hoping that with Aston Villa struggling the way that they were financially that he'd be able to pick They'd them be off forced to, yeah. and now he's in a position where he's not but it sounds like he's holding firm well he will hold firm he will wait until the last minute to get the deal he wants which Overall, from a business sense is, yeah. is, is what you want but and, and what do Spurs fans, fans feel of that well, yeah but, but shouldn't Spurs fans go this guy's this guy is not going to ruin this football club absolutely they should but and, and that's the way I feel. In terms of the way he manages the football club, it's second to none. He's probably, in purely business sense, the best, best chairman in the league. 
And, and that's not something I say with any kind of pride, mm. because I don't give a shit about the deals of NFL, don't give a shit if we um, screw over other people and get more money for our players than they're worth. That doesn't bother me, that's not why I follow my club, but that's the way, th these aren't membership-based football clubs anymore, they're not for the fans, these are businesses run by investment companies often, whose bottom line is about getting as much money through that door as possible and profits are shared as much as possible equally through the uh, shareholders and whatnot. So th that's what's important to them. And that's how you're gauged as, as your ability to run a football club. And that's why it doesn't have any sentiment. If I'd said to you at the start of the, the summer, you can lose no one, but not get anyone, or you can roll the dice and, and you might, you're gonna lose a few. If I offered you that at the start of the season, yeah, you're right. keeping everyone, and not, but not gaining anyone, would you have taken that? Um, it's hard for you to. I, I tell you what. I, I, would you? Would I rather be in our position or Chelsea's position, where they're bringing players in, but there's a risk that they're losing a couple of first team players as well. Yeah. I, I think in terms of stability and actually the overall likelihood that you're going to have a more successful season, it's better to have stability and it's better to have a playing a, a, kind of, a group of players that want to be there together and, and a manager that knows who he's working with. That said, I think you speak to a lot of Spurs fans and they look at what's happening at Chelsea and looking at the fact they're going to be spending money, they've made a great sign in Giorgino, uh, you know, that they'd be more excited if they yeah. were Chelsea fans. Do you know Different what I mean? Do you understand? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I get it. So uh, there's that. But the fact is, look, deep down, I, there's no way we're going into this Premier League season without signing anyone. And sure, actually, this and is my one or two question. is probably all we need. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's the, he's still looking for people, and he often he does do it late, so it might turn up. Yeah. Final, final question then: uh, Who's in the best shape going into the next season? Spurs, Chelsea, or Arsenal? And I want you guys to let me know in the comments who out of those three is looking the best going into the. I start can't of the answer that without partisanship. I can't take my Spurs hat off, so I'm going to say Tottenham, but. You, there's an argument for both Arsenal and Chelsea, and, and, and Chelsea are, they've got a great manager coming in, Sorry, he's very exciting, uh, for, played hugely attacking football for Napoli. Crucially, the individuals aren't as important as his system, so even if they lose a couple of players, I think his ability to manage that team will negate some of the holes left by a players as good as Eden Hazard if he happens to go. So I think he, they're going to be good. And Arsenal, we don't know. We just don't know because... I don't think we know with Chelsea really either, to be honest. Yeah, we don't know. But I, I think Sarri's... It was more impressive what he did with Napoli without winning anything than what Emery did with PSG. No, no that, that's not a, that's not <laughs> that a controversial is, that opinion. Is. No, it isn't. Guys won trophies. Let's look, let them, let so them they can talk it through. So, so what? You guys talk no, it no, through. No, no, no. I don't care You've what... You've had your chance. No, I'm having, I'm having <laughs> what you, what you, you can't stop me. I'm going to carry on talking. Don't cut it off. <laughs> don't cut it off. Uh, ask, look, the difference is you can't look at Emery's achievements at... I've cut it off. No, did you? No, he's not cut it off. Go on, finish your point then. Let me just make my point. You can't, you can't consider Emery's achievements last year as anything other than the bare, bare minimum of what they need to achieve there. But he ain't won nothing. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I know. It's a weird one. It's, 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 it's exciting. I think Spurs are in the best position still. So. Okay. Uh, that's what Flav thinks. Uh, let's know your thoughts on the whole Spurs situation. Why won't they sign anyone? Well, we just told you, haven't you? So you're welcome. Give me some reasons. <laughs> um, subscribe to Wall Street. As I said, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button. And we'll see you soon.